Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is a lovely little book haul. So I went over the weekend, I went to 66 books. I went back in December where I did like a 20 book plus book haul. Well, like 21, I bought like 24 books and I think 21 were for myself. Um, but yeah, so 66 books is in a Hemel Hempstead. I could have pronounced that wrong, so I'm sorry. Um, and it's like a book warehouse and on one to two but one to two weekends a month there is a um, like book club which basically means members of the public can go and buy books for 70% off the discount price um, it's only open on those certain weekends so definitely look ahead don't travel in and think you'll be able to get access midweek because you won't um, and I say this because but yeah, so the man, when he was talking to us at the start, like introduced, like just say, going through his like general run through, because obviously not everyone's been before. He was saying like how some people have like traveled far and like turned up like midweek and obviously been turned away. So I'm just like pre-warning you, like don't go midweek because um, you won't be able to go there. Um, and started queuing at quarter to seven, got in when it opened um i wasn't the first person there and someone did arrive with a suitcase i only took like not this bag but i took like a canvas bag um like that kind of size and came away with so i came i bought 13 books from um 66 books and then i've got two recently when i say two recently i mean i bought two today from asda um a lot of these, a lot of the books that I did buy from 66 books I've heard of before. So it wasn't as though I was buying loads of stuff that I've never heard of before. Obviously I did buy some where I've not heard of it before because I do still want to expand my horizons. But obviously I bought the other books that I had, I was aware of because obviously they're cheaper. Let's start off with the books that I bought from Asda. So I got Holding the Reins by Paisley Hope. This is a cowboy romance. Slightly floppy. Um, both of the books I bought were published by like Penguin. So I, and have like that slight flop to them. So I think Penguin, bo Penguin books might be a bit floppier. Um, but this is just, the top line says, Escape to the Wild West with a sizzling cowboy romance that will leave you breathless. Um, and it's like a brother's best friend um, kind of trope. The main male character is a retired hockey person. So it's like mixing like, potentially mixing a slight bit of hockey with cowboy romance. And that just sounds so good. Um, and this is book one in the Silver Pines series. So there's gonna be more books. This does give Chestnut Springs vibes. Like if you look at the background, does that not give Chestnut Springs? It does, it absolutely does um so yeah also i do plan to go to the works like on wednesday um to today is monday um tomorrow wild love is it wild love book two in the rose hill series comes out tomorrow um so i do kind of although i'm wanting to make a start on all of my books this month i do still want to start some new ones mm. but i could wait but I do also want to get um, the Cassandra Clare book that's got like sprayed edges. And also I do want to get Daydream. I left Icebreaker at home and I am wildfires. So I do need to, but luckily I've got like dentist on like Monday, like next Monday. So I can definitely bring those back with me. My bookcase is starting to buy. Like it has never had this many books. Oh well. Also, the hinge is kind of like broken off, but I've had it for almost six years. I've actually had it for almost six years um, and it's never had so many books. And then I also bought Morbidly Yours by Ivy Fairbanks. This book I actually came across before it was published, I think, or just about the published time because um, it came up on like Facebook. Um, this, so I, it also just happens to be the tickled pink book of like the month which I don't buy I don't necessarily buy sprayed edges obviously if it's going to be the same price then I might um but it does make me feel a bit better buying the book when 45p in total goes towards tickled pink um and that like well 
like the tickle pink campaign and goes between two charities one of which is breast cancer now and the other is copperfield um the main male character is an, in the undertaking business um and the female character has recently lost a um her husband not potentially not recently recently but um yeah i definitely knew i wanted to pick this up i love the tagline falling for the wrong person bury your feelings that's like a nice little subtle humor there so on to the books from 66 what did i spot first i kind of think the first book that i spotted was mexican gothic by sylvia moreno garcia um i didn't actually know too much about this but i read the top and thought this kind of gives seven husbands of evelyn hugo um but like add it make it gothic like i've heard good things about it and actually this is fairly oh the cooking smells nice because i'm re i'm filming for what time is it it's 6 p.m right now um 301 pages so this is a shorter book um so that'd be quite nice to read um i really should stop going in order um two books that i found next were survive the night by riley sega and the only one left by the same author i've never i unless i go into waterstones i don't necessarily see like books like this um and i do enjoy thrillers like this and i know that people love the author's books and i do actually have the odd one on kindle i might actually have one of these on kindle or i might have one of the other ones um this one I didn't, I didn't even look at the blabs i just picked them up and i was like riley sega i'll pick them up um oh yeah no i did um it's just charlie jordan is being driven across the country by a serial killer maybe um part of this is giving um 10 hours to go or something like i think that's what the book's called um which was a thriller i read like two months ago that i really enjoyed um because it was following it ended up following three people in a car um on a trip where the intentions of like two people against another weren't the greatest um but then also it kind of gives <laughs> weirdly enough the first part with the whole rideshare scheme kind of gives people we meet on vacation you and me on vacation i can't remember which title is the uk version because obviously poppy and alex are like going to the same going to limfield um ohio and so going the same like poppy gets a ride with alex i love how i'm drawing like similarities between romance and thriller love that I definitely did not read this blurb. It's a gothic thriller. It's someone who people think has like murdered their whole family, but can't physically speak and like communicate like their story. Um, is it bad that my guess would be that Kit is the person who killed them? Sorry, I know. Imagine if that was actually the case. Imagine if I've literally gone, yep, it's the living carer. And it's like, then I picked up a dawn of onyx by kate golden i've heard of this because of emmy um i know that this is a fantasy i kind of picked up a bit of a range um like there's the odd romance the odd fantasy um the odd thriller i even picked up a classic again i just picked i saw a dawn of onyx knew that good things have been said and picked it up imagine if emmy actually only rated this like a three stars and i've just been oh i know that she's read it Girl been kidnapped to make to help heal soldiers. The king works with a prisoner who's bad to help escape and she's trying to make it out of this kangaroo. Um and there's lots of stuff going on that stops her. Um is this is part of a series, like the sacred stones. Oh, but we love a good map. Yes, this is part of a series. Or is it or have I seen um Ashlyn read this? I don't know but no it is the first part of a series um because the be next book is a promise of peridot i think i've seen ashlyn read this i don't know um but yeah just sounds really really good 
I need to put Mexican Gothic that way, otherwise I will forget that I've talked about it. I then saw Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I picked this up knowing that Powerless, um, the book by Lauren Roberts, was inspired by some parts of this. Wasn't it like Hunger Games and Red Queen or something? Um, and so I thought, let's pick this up, see what we do. I'm just curious. To there was other books in the series but I was like I'm only picking up book one um partly because I stupidly went in there thinking oh I'll buy three four books 13 books later is it 13 I never actually counted 12 books and I paid 36.50 um in total I think the rated retail was like 120 or something like that um so it was a lot um but yeah, I just thought, let's see whether I enjoy this. Because um, obviously, if I enjoy it, like, if I enjoy it, I've got another series that I can read. If not, then obviously. Then I picked up That's Left and All That's Left in the World. First of all, I love this cover. It makes me think of Raiders of the Lost Heart um, a little bit. Um, this is a dystopian... Um, where two guys meet each other and form a friendship that begins to feel like another so this is a gay romance is i know that sapphic is obviously lesbian so is there like a word used for like male love like two male love interests um like two men in love um or is it just gay um genuinely educate me because i'm just curious basically it's them making their way trying to just trying to survive in a dystopian world and fall in love um i know that i've seen this about i can't remember where i think i must have seen someone haul it or something but i just think the cover looks so cool um i think in some ways part of if i was to like write a book in some ways i think i'd want my books to be like a mixture between like this and like what um and what done and dusted is like and also the um main lumberjack series i haven't read any of those but like but they're on kindle unlimited and i'm really keep, my bed keeps dropping down at a certain point and i'm like what is happening here oh no it's fine um so i think i'd want my like book covers to be like that whether that be like romance or whatnot um obviously if i was to write like fantasy i'd want it to be slightly like different but um i think if i was to write romance or something i'd want like some similar elements um i've gone off track um but yeah then i bought scythe by neil schusterman i think there was like book two there and as well i only picked up book one again because if i don't like it um it makes it easy to get rid of and I don't feel as bad. Um, no one in this world can die, but there are people called scythes who kill people. And there's two people and they might have, one of them has to kill the other. Um, but I've heard good things. Part of me was also kind of hoping like I could maybe see like Red Rising there because I am interested in reading Red Rising as well. I also picked up Brit Marie was here by Frederick Barkman. Um, I don't think I've actually heard anything about this book, but I saw the author and I know people like Anxious People and also a man called Uwe um, or Ove, I don't know how it's pronounced. And I was like, people have been loving his stories. I know that they touch on like poignant stuff. Again, I didn't even realise, I didn't even read the blurb. I just saw frederick barkman and was like bye but it says at first sight brit marie is a fussy passive aggressive busybody but hidden inside her is a woman who has bigger dreams and a warmer heart than anyone around her imagines when she finds herself alone for the first time in decades she really she realizes she spent her life making choices for the sake of other people is it too late for her to change and in a small town of big-hearted misfits can brit marie find a place where she truly belongs this was the only book by this author and Again, I want to expand my, like, horizons. Is this literary fiction? I think it might be. Um, and I think he does that genre well. Another book I found was Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I've literally just seen that, um, 
Ellen was potentially going to read this. I never completed that video um, before wanting to start filming before I lose daylight. Um, I've heard good things. Emmy has also read it and enjoyed it. This is a duology, um, but I do think, I think only the first book was there. Yeah, it's a fantasy book. It's to do with a family and trying to claim power and a dark secret. Um, and I don't really want to know more, but I think this cover is really, really pretty. Um, and I saw it and I was like, I'm buying this because if it's only going to cost me three pounds, that's the thing, like a lot of the books that I bought are ones that I've seen before because then I can kind of justify it in my mind a little bit more of like, I wouldn't usually come across these cheap on like my usual day, hence why I got so many that I am aware of. Or again with the Frederick Clarkman one, it was like, unless I go to like Waterstones, I'm not going to have access to any of his books, hence why I purchased. Going on to one that I definitely had not heard of is The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. Um, I saw this cover and I was like, oh, like what's this about? Or I saw like this part and I was like, oh, The Miniaturist, because I knew that like, it would be like miniature like building things and like rooms and stuff because there was, there was an NCIS episode um, related to like solving murders um, from like miniature rooms, like exact miniatures. But it says on an autumn day in eight, in 1686, 18 year old Nella Ortman arrives at a grand house in Amsterdam to begin her new life as the wife of wealthy merchant Johannes Brandt. Though curiously distant, he presents her with an extraordinary wedding gift, a cabinet sized replica of the home. It is to be furnished by an elusive miniaturist whose tiny creations ring eerily true. As Nella uncovers the secrets of her new household, she realises the escalating dangers they face. The miniaturist seems to hold their fate in her hands, but does she plan to save or destroy them? And it just sounds... It's like a mystery. Historical mystery. I don't really read historical too much, but I just thought this sounds really interesting. And it's kind of like a thriller. Um, but yeah, I'm interested. And again, it's one that I don't actually see. You don't... It's one that I've never heard of before. I think in reality there was probably two that I don't I'd never heard of before that I bought from Sixty Six Books and like had never seen before. Like the Riley Sager ones I've heard at least know of. Scythe I know of. That's left in the world I've like seen about. Um Red Queen I know of. Dance of Thieves I really know I know of Scythe I know of. Mexican Gothic I've heard about. So it is literally the Brit Marie was here and the miniaturists that I had never heard anything about. So it's pretty good going. And then I got Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery. I heard good things from Ashlyn. Um, she really loves Anne of Green Gables. I know that this is technically part of a series, but I know that this is like book one. And I just, this is like a classic, I believe. I wanted to read this. I've seen this about, um, and although part of me would have bought it in like a really pretty hardback, I was like, for three pounds, what well, would have been three pounds? We know, I'd have got less than, hey Google, what's 70% of seven? The answer is 4.9. So four pounds 90. Wait, no, I just, that's what I got off. Hey Google, what's seven minus 4.9? I don't know why I just typed it that. The answer is 2.1. Two pounds 10. This cost me two pounds freaking 10. Also it's floppy as you can see, but it's literally a modern classic. I'm excited. I know nothing about this, but I've heard good things. This was a book that I was not expecting to find at all. At all. But I was so excited when I saw it. Like, I, there was, just, like, on the lower floor, like, you'll go up, originally you'll go upstairs, you'll see, like, the main part, and then downstairs is mainly, like, non-fiction, not non-fiction, well, there is non-fiction, like, you get cookbooks, you get some more children's books and whatnot and like you'll get like the biographies and whatnot in between that shelves you'll just have on the corners there'll be like tiny shelves around like little like pillars that are like against like the flat wall i was of course i'm gonna look in every part because i i could miss a book um i bought the invocations by crystal sutherland i have heard great things mainly um because of georgia she loved this book loved it so much um 
this was part of their book club she picked it as their pick um like georgia rachel sophie lang this is part of their book club um this has oh it's a sapphic horror it's a haunting horror thriller and then i have the ebook of another book of hers called house of hollow um which i have not read yet um but i saw this and was like i need to buy this i need to buy this i will say the australian version does have like a pink cover around the end i know it's their like trade paperback version but i do like the pink i did like the pink um i'm not gonna lie um i think this is ya um i could be wrong it says oh trigger warnings contains body horror murder and violent scenes so it might not be ya um <gasps> Sorry about the quick pause, but I thought I, it was lunchtime. I just said I'm a bit flu. I looked at it and thought, oh, it's just like a printed version, right? Flicked through. It goes through to the other side. I have a signed copy. Why am I going to cry about a book that I don't know whether I'm going to enjoy? I didn't... I'm sorry, I didn't even look inside this book. I saw invocations picked up. Are all copies signed? I got a freaking signed copy. And like, that is definitely signed. And like, the pen comes through at like different spots as well, so it's not as though it's like pretended to be thingied on. Oh my god. <laughs> That was the best ending. I left it to the end. I was checking that I had no more books. I left it to the end because I was like, this is the book that I was most excited to find. Of course, it's signed. It's freaking signed. Um, I'm sorry. What? Um, but those are all the books that I've bought recently. Um, I've probably bought other books recently, but I've just forgotten about. Um, in terms of like forgotten that I bought them recently. Well. I do now own all of the books in the um, A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Um, that was something I don't think I shared because I was doing that like gradually as they were coming out in Asda. I hope you guys enjoyed. That was a very unexpected ending. Um, but I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.